Hello guys, this is Terry from Ginky Gaming and we're back with another One Piece theory. The music in the background is by my friend Lucas Diamond. It's In Case of Corruption. His latest hit. You guys should go check out his channel. It should be in my description down below. If not, you guys need to tell me to get on my job of getting it there. But today's discussion is about power scaling. We as a community do the so-and-so is stronger than so-and-so thing way too much. Like, Whitebeard is stronger than Akainu, or Blackbeard is stronger than Sengoku, stuff like that, or Kaido is stronger than Luffy. Instead of doing that, why don't we make a proper tier system where it's no Yonko level, Pirate King level, Vice Admiral level, Commander level, what if we just consider them tiers within and of themselves? Just think for yourselves a minute. There are so many strong players in the world of One Piece at this particular time that for us to actually say <coughs> so-and-so is not Yonko tier or so-and-so is not Admiral level, that we're actually insulting the characters for uh, what they were designed to be. They were designed to be strong fighters or strong swordsmen or strong rulers. We'll first take a look at Roger's crew. As we know, Godeed Roger was the Pirate King. So with that in mind, we have the special tier for all of our top tier fighters called S tier. At this particular time, I believe that Roger and his crew, when they were in their prime, they were at this level. Because when someone's at their prime, it's a lot different than when someone's in their uh, middle age or uh, old age. So we're essentially not doing a true comparison in this perspective. And we must also list the Yonko in this tier. Big Mom, Kaido, Whitebeard, Blackbeard, and Shanks. All of these individuals are uh, currently the strongest players, or were the strongest players within the One Piece world for the pirate side of things. Then you have people like uh, Commander-in-Chief Kong of the Marines, and then you have Akainu, Aokiji, Kizaru, Green Bull, Fujitora, that also sit at this tier. And then you have yourself some wild cards right now, like Enel. What tier is Enel? Is Enel stronger than Admirals and Yonkos? We don't actually know. So at this particular time, we do have a uh, tweener tier called the A tier. These are for people that we know have the potential to uh, really grow and develop to be the S tier fighters or the S tier combatants. And I forgot to mention Dragon and Sabo from the Revolutionary Army. As you guys know, Dragon has to be a strong individual to basically be one of the most feared men in the One Piece world. Oh, I need to hit my music again. I really need to loop this up. There we go, guys. I am now not failing us. Like I was talking about, Dragon and Salvo, these two are very dynamic fighters from what we can infer from situations. So if I had to say right now, Dragon would be S tier. So would Prime Garp and Prime Sengoku and Prime Shiki. And to much effect, I feel like Prime Judge would be sitting on that line between A and S because we haven't seen much of Prime Judge or Prime Judge Vinsmoke but let's move on to the A tier these guys like I said have the possibility to grow and become S tier by the end of the series this would be basically the top three commanders of the Yonko crew this would be the Straw Hats, at least the Monster Trio, including Jinbei, so Monster Quartet or Quadrat. 
It would be Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Jinbei. And then for uh, the Whitebeard crew, that would be... It would be Ace in it, but since Ace passed, until we get that proper... Uh, uh, the Ace Pirates or the Fire Spade Pirates mini story or mini arc thing that Oda's working on with another artist, until that, I would have to potentially mark Ace at A or B rank, but that's not for comparison. It's just because he may have been one of the Yonko Whitebeard's strongest fighters, just like Marco and Josu, and Tavista from much extent. While for Big Mom, it would be uh, Katakuri, Cracker, Smoothie, and I think it would feel wrong of me to not mention Snack, because Snack was defeated by Yuruj, which is one of the Supernovas. Which is a really good segue point for the Supernovas. All of them sit at this tier. Except for Blackbeard, but Blackbeard's in that really weird situation where Blackbeard is a Yonko and was a Supernova. And I'm not counting, like, the second generation rookies yet, like Cavendish, or Bartolomeu, or uh, Caribou. We'll talk about them here in a little bit. This is more or less not a comparison list at all, guys. It's just a generalized tier list that gives us an idea of how people can grow and develop. And I think Rob Lucci is in this list. For A tier, I think Kaku is here, and I think to the greater extent, Stussy, who is also a member of CP0 Igus, I think she sits here, and I think the Underworld Brokers, or the Underworld Emperors sit at this A point as well, due to their strength and due to their resources and their intelligence networks. And the reason why the Yonko sit at X tier instead of at A tier is because the power of allies, the power of an intelligence network, the power of basically having so many uh, members of your crew, extra allies, ships. Same thing with the Marine Admirals. And I feel like the Shishi Bukai, people like Boa, Moria, Do Flamingo, and some of the Vice Admirals like Momonga, Onigumo, I can't remember his name, but the the Dalmatian guy, I think it's Dalmian. There's so many characters that you end up forgetting names slightly. But I feel like there's a lot of Vice Admirals that also sit at this level where there's so much potential. And Kobe and Helmeppo as well as Smoker and Toshigi are at this level where there is exponential growth for them that the fans are kind of expecting. And the reason why I've not touched on Magellan guys is because I really don't know how much of a role he'll play. He's technically within the range of being close to the Admiral level or to the same strength as the Admirals, which was the comparison from Oda himself. I'm not making a comparison of my own here, but with that in mind, with his power being respectable like theirs, there I go again accidentally doing a comparison. Uh, due to his side effect of his double fruit to his body that nasty uh, diarrhea or the inability to fight due to uh, his own poison really affecting him. Uh, he'll be strong for several hours and then he'll be sick or he'll be asleep. That inconsistence lands him in this A tier. I mean, he's a stellar fighter. He was a well-designed boss by Oda. And moving on to the top well, the only top character we know of, Kaido's crew, Jack, at this current time. Jack and whoever is king and queen, they'll fill that void for uh, this particular situation for Kaido's crew, where they're strong and there's exponential growth expected. 
I guess the same thing would apply to some of the prime fighters if for, um, for some of these fighters that were in their prime during Roger's era, like really. A tier isn't bad. Not not at all. And same thing for Inurashi or uh, Dogstrom and Nekomamushi. I don't remember the English localization of his name, but we'll just call him Neko or Cat Viper. Yeah, that's it, Cat Viper. We'll put them in this tier as well. And Pedro is here as well if we're counting people from more modernized arcs. But with this all, all said and referenced here, we'll move on to the B tier. These people have growth potential, but not nearly as much as these A tier competitors or these A tier powerhouses. These would be the remainders of the Yonko's commanding forces. Basically, these would be uh, the, the commanders of the lower... I won't say lower numbers, because all of these commanders fight at about the same equal level. Just Oda has not given us enough screen time for all of these commanders. So, with that in mind, due to the lack of real presentation for these guys and the the lack of positioning for these guys and with the allies for the most part I'm talking about the white beard allies like Whitey Bay um, Guy McThunderlord and a couple of the other guys I feel like they all fall in this B tier spot where they have potential to be very talented fighters here at the later part of the New World where Luffy is gathering a strong force. Because as we know, as the main protagonist, Luffy is going to be gathering as many allies as he possibly can get. So you have these guys, you have big mom allies like the Sun Pirates, like I won't say like the Fire Tank Pirates or like Jorma, because I feel like the fighters of Jorma, the clone army, they fall lower than this, but I feel like as of right now, it's the same exponential growth right now for the Vin Smoke children, Reiju, Ichiji, Niji, and Yonji. I feel like once we get to see them more in action, we'll get to see their full expected growth. This is the same tier as our boy Peckham's. That crazy lion turtle guy. I feel like all of these fighters are really talented and like they're very they're very strong and they match well with the straw hats because as we know the remainder of the straw hat crew the remainder of the uh, supernova crews all fall in this B tier area and that's not because they're weak it's because of the exponential power scaling that will experience throughout the remainder of the series. I'm not saying anyone is weaker than anyone else, though Yoda did specify that the weakling trio, Chopper, Nami, and Usopp will be the weakest of the Straw Hats, but that in mind, they still remain in B-tier due to the exponential growth. And I would have to say Kinema, Kinemon, Kanjiro, and Raizo are in B-tier. We've seen a little bit of them fighting, but we've not seen enough where we can say they're A tier due to uh, exponential growth expected. And there's a reason why I'm not discussing Momo right now, or Momo Nosuke, is I'm saving Momo for when I discuss people like Cobra, people like Elizabeth, and people like um, King Riku. These guys all fall under the same tier, per se, which is tier C, not because of their strength or not because of their true assets. It's because these guys are rulers. They're really strong, really talented people. Well, in Momo's case, he still has a lot to work on, but these people control individual nations, 
And a majority of these rulers meet up for the reverie, which is a big convention of the allied nations or the nations that try to stay within the good side of the world government. These guys have control of their own military. These guys have control of their own secondary political forces. So these guys are relatively strong for what they what they have for their own nation. Though Cobra was kind of ousted by Crocodile, which is another one of our A tiers that I forgot to make quick reference of. And I noticed I didn't reference Koala or Hack. They would fall into B tier for right now. They're really strong, talented fishmen, martial artists. But due to exponential growth and due to the fact that we've not seen a lot of the revolutionaries really fighting other than flashbacks and other than small parts of Dressa Rosa and small parts of uh, the Impel Down arc and small parts of the Marine Ford, them and uh, Ivanko and Inazuma, they all fall under that B tier where there's growth that's gonna happen. Now moving on to the rest of our C tier guys. These guys are guys who are still relatively strong. I put Caribou here because until we see more of Caribou and some more of the allies in general that we haven't seen really fight much because we saw Scotch, one of Kaido's allies or commanders. I'm not sure where exactly Scotch falls as a cyborg. This is the same tier where I would list Fishman, Giants, Minkman, Snake Tribe, Long Leg, Long Arm Tribe people. Because even, even people of these races, they're still really strong due to their heritage, due to what they have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, fishmen are strong due to uh, the fact that living underwater. Giants are strong due to their size and their strength and due to Elbeth. And I guess we would put the Three-Eyed Tribe here due to their ability to see the future and be able to uh, uh, perceive the Poneglyphs to a certain level. But with all this in mind, there's so many characters that we can rank. I would guess that I would put Don Krieg at this level as well. Because Don Krieg did have his own fleet. He was a pirate. A dirty pirate. Being someone willing to use poison. I really feel like we'll see him later on. That he'll be one of our surprise villains. But with that being said, we'll move along a little bit more, guys, down to our D tier. Our D tier is that final tier where we would put normal people, like everyday civilians. And it's also where I'd put fodder for the most part. And the area that's the gray area between D and C tier, I would place Sea Kings. Land Kings and Sky Kings. I know Oda hasn't formally called some of these beasts Land Kings, like the elephant from when Luffy was training, Zunisha, and some of the other big creature we creatures we've seen. But these guys are exponentially strong, but due to their animalistic traits and animalistic mindsets they're not able to fully utilize their strength. Because some of these animals even had hockey. And Sea Kings are able to basically destroy Double Fruit users if they are able to knock them overboard. But with all this in mind, the normal civilians, the fodder, civilians are strong because they have to live in an era full of pirates of a, a world where there's a corrupt government, a world where there's a void history that they know nothing about, a world where their 
being spoon-fed lies by the Marines and by the government. So in general, these guys are relatively strong for having to put up with what all of that goes on in their world. And the fodder is kind of self-exclamatory. They're strong because they, they have to be strong enough to be aligned with these certain crews. Even though fodder are more or less no-named characters, but with that extent, they themselves are strong together. You guys are saying, Terry or Genki, why did you not talk about Dr. Vegapunk or the Pacifista? They fall under certain jerk shishkins, per se. I feel like Dr. Vegapunk would be A tier. The Pacifista, I feel like they're really solid B tier, but I feel like they're more or less mindless killing machines, so there's no exponential growth. Unless Kuma is able to take control of them. And then in that case, with Kuma being a Shishi Bukai and with the pacifist basically listening to him, that would move him. I believe I have him at A tier. It would probably move him up from B tier if he was B tier. But that's not because of power scaling, because Kuma will still be the same strength. These pacifists will still be the same strength. It's just, there's power in numbers, powers in political power, powers in money, powers in military strength. We don't take this all into account when we say, well, so-and-so is stronger than so-and-so. We need to be thinking from multiple angles, angles to understand power scaling. I may have missed some people. I may have missed some races. I may have missed people like Foxy. But the reason why I missed or skipped over certain people is because of the fact of canon versus filler. And the fact that we're already at 22 minutes. If I kept going with every character announced, we would have a 30 or 40 minute video, guys. If not longer. So I'm going to end it here. I do want to thank Lucas Diamond again for this wonderful track. I want to thank you guys for your support, your views, your likes. You guys have yourself a nice morning, afternoon, or evening. I'm, I'm Terry from Yankee Gaming. You have yourself a good time now.